Welcome to Life on Maui. My name is Stephen Freed. Our guest for today is Dr. Aurora Juliana Ariel. She is here to help demystify the psyche for people, to get a handle on the different sides of self, dealing specifically with the subconscious. I had a session with her this past week and her work is fascinating and helpful. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Happy to be here. So what is your background? What, what, is a, what has brought you to this point? Because I know this is very pioneering work that you're doing now, and obviously you had a lot of background that brought you to this point. Yes, I think what was the important catalyzing moment for me was when my mother became seriously ill when I was 17. Hmm. And in that moment, I became her mother, her counselor, her spiritual guide. And it really catapulted me into the world of suffering, something I really didn't know much about growing up in Malibu on the beach. Um, pretty idyllic childhood. I was, and back in those days, you know, we didn't have a lot of TV, and we didn't really, as children, focus too much on world affairs. And so I was pretty much an innocent. And it just brought me into understanding that there was a lot more going on on the planet, that people were suffering, and it really catalyzed the quest. And so I think you could say my life's journey from that point has been about a quest for truth, a quest for what's at the heart of suffering, why are we all undergoing so many things that are heartbreaking, heartrending, and, and is there a cure? Can we, mm -hmm. Are we relegated to this movie, or can we free ourselves and have a different life? When people hear, including myself, that you grew up on the beach in Malibu, that conjures up all kinds of images. I mean, it's, it does sound very idyllic. So mm -hmm. describe your life a little bit at that point in time. What, what, what was your life like? We lived right on the beach in Malibu uh, with grandparents in Beverly Hills, uh, very much children running and playing. We had a lot of freedom because we lived in a colony and it was gated. So. The kids ran in packs. I had a horse and loved just getting off the bus from school, riding my bike to my horse, getting on my horse and going through the mountains and along the beach and, and then interacting with the surfer boys. And, you know, we all were pretty innocent back then and not a lot of television. I had a very harmonious household. Did you? Yeah, harmonious my parents household. were very spotless home, parents mellow. Uh, idyllic setting, going to sleep every night with the ocean waves. Oh, yeah. well, and and what, brought, what brought you here to Maui? Maui was in my heart, Hawaii was in my heart um, after living for 12 years in northern Idaho. 12 years in northern Idaho? Mm -hmm. And what were you doing for 12 years in northern Idaho? Children, gardens, building a beautiful home overlooking the lake and creating a, uh, what was called the Golden Rose Retreat, and just a very um, ideal life, mm. life uh, vision that I had that I was able to manifest at a young age. Mm. And tell me, when, when you say demystify the psyche, what does that mean for you? What, what do you feel that you do that helps demystify the psyche? For me, it's a mission. I feel compelled to help people understand the psyche. It's been my life's work. It's been my adventure, um, a pioneer in a whole uncharted realm. And I've, I've realized that the subconscious is very much behind all the challenging conditions of our life. And yet it's the most unaddressed and unknown body, and yet the most powerful that we have. It is being reflected on in our outer lives constantly and our inner feelings. And yet we constantly try to address issues and our life situations from an outer point of view, fixing things outside and ignoring what's really happening inside. So part of my mission, I feel, is educating people in the world about this, about what's happening inside them. Yeah, I very much feel uh, that way. In the 70s, I took the EST seminar. And I remember one of the most powerful lines for me from the S seminar was, it's what's subconscious that rules you. Mm -hmm. 
And then I went on, I, st I studied hypnotherapy and I was a hypnotherapist. So I very much, uh, am very much in line with the kind of work that you're doing. And actually, uh, later on in today's show, I'm going to facilitate a session for Aurora. Mm -hmm. So you will get an opportunity to actually see how these steps work. It's seven steps that you go through. So we'll, so stay tuned, keep watching. We're going to go through a session with you. Um, what areas do you help people with? What areas of their life do you help people with? Um, everything. Everything from physical conditions to relationship dynamics to financial issues to self-esteem. Yeah. So any condition anyone is dealing with that is adverse, you know, that is challenging their lives, limiting their lives, can be traced to the subconscious. And what I've found in my work is that it's the fastest way. So if you want to unlock a challenging condition in your life or a relationship, that's not working or a financial situation, the fastest way I've found is to go right to the corresponding part in the subconscious and heal it. And when you shift that inner, your inner reality, the outer just magically shifts to in alignment with that. And so as we change these outer pictures by doing this inner work, you're actually bringing your life more into what people would call a heaven on earth type experience. And I know that one of the things that you love to do more than anything is has to do with relationship counseling. You, that that's an important area for you. And you told me a story, an anecdote of a woman that I want you to talk about, that, how she, in a very quick time, did some inner work and how that affected, without even dialoguing with her husband, how things changed. Mm -hmm. uh, this woman, um, said recently that she looks at her life from before Aurora and after Aurora. Mm -hmm. and, and that feels really good because my life's work, to see it change people's lives so dramatically as I do all the time is one of the most enriching, fulfilling parts to my life. It's just, I see miracles all the time. And in her life, very much a miracle. She was um, debilitating physically didn't want to live, um, was really kind of tired with life, had been a long-term abusive relationship with the husband, uh, psychologically, verbally abusive, had, had other things too going on. And I think it was like three sessions we did when we met here on Maui. She lives on the mainland. And her husband, and I see this often, just magically changed. It's like just by her yes. working with herself. Yes. And you were, so. Yeah, when you, work on, when you work on your piece to a dynamic. So her piece was the abused one, the victim, the martyr, the, you know, whatever you would find in there, the broken one, the broken hearted one. When you go to the victim part, I found in a, in a dynamic, that is the ruler of the game, so to speak. It really does change um, the thinking that we've had on this planet uh, or the belief in victimhood because in my work I've never found victimhood. I've always found the victim parts are the rulers. So in this instance, to unlock the dynamic of an abusive relationship, you would go to the one that's suffering and that suffering subconscious aspect and heal her or him. In this case, I worked with that part and um, some corresponding parts in her subconscious that were in charge of this dynamic in her life and that had kept it running 30 years and, and that had also, you could trace back into her childhood with her family and other relationships. And it, it was such deep work that she just felt such a dramatic change in her whole self, more empowered, more clear, more directed, more able, to experience joy. So immediately she felt freed out of the prison sentence of, of the depression and, and the debilitation that, that her long-term pattern was causing. So these patterns, you know, affect a lot of our conscious reality, our physical reality, and, and then draw in certain people to play roles for us. So when that inner parts were healed, they no longer needed to magnetize in the abuse. 
And so what you find is the person that is playing that role no longer needs to do it. And they usually will uh, shift in some way. It's extremely fascinating it's to me. It's a yeah, really phenomenal. exciting phenomena that I found out with my work. Phenomenal. And um, I, I want to hear you talk a little bit more about what you say the victim is the ruler. Yeah, this is something I discovered and I was really blown away because we've been taught so many things on this planet that when hard things happen, God is punishing us. Or in the East, you know, we're repaying our karma. Or, uh, and so there's some kind of sense that there's an outer body or deity dictating to us um, our hardships in life and that we must suffer through them. And by suffering through them, we'll become a saint or we'll, a sage or we'll, you know, pay back our karma and be free. And I've never found that to be true in thousands of sessions. I've found that through our experience on Earth and through picking up our generational, the lineage of patterns and our own experience going through life, we, we take on beliefs that form these patterns that then start running and they bring in these life scenarios. So it's like the subconscious is being reflected onto our outer world like a projector screen and our interplays with other people are really um, reflecting what's happening internally and where there's freedom and happiness and joy and harmony that's where our authentic selves is reflecting and when there's hardship and pain and abuse that's where there's something up that is wanting to be healed and addressed and it's it's a patterning in the subconscious calling for our attention so say so Again, specifically say what you mean by the victim is ruler. So when you are, so when a client comes to me, in her case, she's a, being abused. And there doesn't seem to be any way out, because this is a very spiritual woman, a Christian woman. She's done all the spiritual formulas for success in her marriage. And she can't stop this cycle. Uh, nothing she does, the submissive, the quiet one, the angry one, nothing unlocks the puzzle of this abusive dynamic. Until we went into her psyche and we found the part of her that was what you would call, what I call the ruler of the game, the victim part. The victim in her that needed to be martyred. There was a reasoning that it had been patterned that way and that it was actually creating this in her life. So these parts of us act like magnets and they literally draw in people and have them play out these roles for us. So that's why I say the victim part rules. It's the ruler of the game and if you can unlock and heal the victim part, no one needs to play the role for us. And that's how I've miraculously changed a lot of my relationships. And that's why people remark to her upon going back home what happened to your husband? He's a totally different person. She didn't have to drag him into psychotherapy. She didn't have to talk to him about it. I didn't need to work on him. He, she shifted her reality, now no longer needed abuse. We healed the part, we healed the pattern. No part of her needed to be abused anymore. And she, so it did not manifest any longer in her life, in that way, yes. with the same person even. Yes, which so is really... That's fantastic. I mean, yeah. to me, that even speaks more volumes than if you switch people. Because here right. it was within the context of that relationship, mm -hmm. by her transforming, mm -hmm. transformed the whole relationship. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's... Yeah, it's that, exciting. That's very exciting, very exciting work. Um, there was also on a physical, there was someone you worked with that had pronated knees. 